This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Laser Tank One of the USSR's last inventions before the nation's collapse in 1991 could have changed warfare forever. Their 1K17 Zhatye, labeled Stiletto in NATO and Western accounts, was a one-of-a-kind laser-armed tank intended to deter missiles and enemy optoelectronic systems. The body of the tank was based off the 2S19 Msta, a self-propelled howitzer, but the gun was replaced with a modified solid-state laser. This type of laser used a solid focusing medium rather than the more common liquid and gas lasers. The solid medium chosen for the laser needed to provide high power, and while it did, it came at an extremely high financial cost. The laser had 13 laser tubes, each of which had to contain a 30 kilogram or 66.1 pound artificially grown ruby in the shape of a cylinder. The ends of the rubies were covered with silver to act as a focusing mirror. Xenon gas would spiral around the ruby ignited by lamps in the tube, which would then ignite the laser beam. It had a pulse mode that sent off powerful short bursts, enabled by an aluminum garnet device with neodymium additives. It's unknown how far it could strike, but it's been speculated that it may have had a range of around five to six miles. It's been reported that a prototype of the laser built on a Shilka took down a helicopter during a test, not only causing the computer system to shut down, but also melting plastics and thin metals. The main effect of this tank on humans is estimated to have been ocular damage in the form of retinal burns. It's unknown whether the operating crew would have had to wear protective goggles, but the possibility has been largely speculated about. While the USSR tried its hardest to keep the development of the laser tank under wraps, American intelligence gave the Pentagon drawings of the project turned in by defectors, and the stiletto name was born. As the Soviet Union collapsed, the expensive project fell out of the line of priorities and was canned. Two laser tanks were tested. One was then dismantled for scraps, while the other was taken to the Army Technology Museum on display, albeit without its laser. Thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring Dark Five. Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play dark fantasy turn-based RPG available to download on mobile or desktop. Click the link in the description below to play now. Like us, you've probably seen or heard about Raid Shadow Legends from other YouTubers, but this is our first time playing it ourselves, and we found it actually lives up to the hype. The graphics are incredibly animated and rendered. Speaking of rendering, we found it great to play on mobile while our video projects are rendering for the channel. Combat is well-paced with ample strategic variations, and the interface is super responsive. You'll definitely want to check out the link in the description below and try it out for yourself. We're playing under the name Dark Five. Other new players using the links below within the next 30 days will get 100,000 silver for lots of upgrades, 50 gems, one energy refill, and one free champion, Adjudicator. Once you're playing, check your game inbox for your rewards and pick a free champion to give you a boost in your early game progress. Naturally, we went with a Dark Elf. Season 1 is live and you can win even more helpful rewards, including free energy refills, gems, upgraded artifact sets, and new epic and legendary champions by fulfilling the daily and weekly challenges. Download Raid Shadow Legends by clicking on the link in the description below. Space Cannon The USSR developed space cannons during the Cold War, and unbeknownst to the public, one of them was actually fired. The R-23M Kartek was a 23mm cannon designed by Aaron Richter, with the intention of aiming the Tupolev Tu-22 Blinder, a bomber plane which then served as inspiration for the space project codenamed Almaz. Almaz was a habitable reconnaissance satellite base with spy equipment and a modified R-23M Kartek developed by Alexander Nudelman under the KB Tuchmash Design Bureau. The new cannon was a 14.5mm rapid-fire space weapon allegedly capable of shooting 200 gram shells at an alleged 690 meters per second. If the weapon was placed in space, using it would require the cosmonauts to quickly turn their entire station towards intended targets so they could have a clear view from the cockpit. This wasn't the most efficient of systems. Yet the USSR delayed progress on the Almaz due to pressure to launch the first space station, which they did under the name Salyut in 1971. The USSR, however, continued work on Almaz, hiding the truth by simply claiming that all their stations were similar to Salyut, purely civilian research stations. Until 1982, the Soviets had seven Almaz stations in space. After the fall of the USSR, Russia confirmed the rumors of its military space stations and admitted that a cannon had been fired in space on January 24, 1975, from Salyut 3, an Almaz station. 
It was part of a test carried out a few hours before the station was scheduled to be deorbited. Allegedly, the cannon fired three blasts with a total of 20 shells launched to the void. The USSR has kept the details of the blasts and the result of the overall test a secret. Project HARP The High Altitude Research Project was a joint effort between Canada and the United States with the goal of making low-cost ballistic re-entry vehicles rather than rockets. HARP sought the use of a large gun to fire spaceships to high altitudes at high speeds without using a rocket. The project was launched thanks to Gerald Bull, a ballistics engineer who lobbied for the project relentlessly. He developed the high-speed gun mechanism intended to be used for space travel while he worked on research for the Canadian military on making ABMs, anti-ballistic missiles, and ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, in the 1950s. His model for ABMs sought to shoot them from guns, a far cheaper system than supersonic wind tunnels. While the project didn't work out, he wanted to apply the technology to space travel. The U.S. was interested, and they allowed him to work on his idea for re-entry vehicles. Oversized guns would shoot undersized vehicles, which would mean an extremely high acceleration. The idea was tested using shells fired at the Atlantic Ocean and in 1966 at a test site in Yuma, Arizona. At the test site, the gun fired a 400-pound projectile labeled Martlet II into space briefly, marking an altitude record of 110 miles or 180 kilometers. Contradictory to that success, the project was soon cancelled with all of its holdings transferred to Bull by means of a new corporation, Space Research Institute Incorporated. It's suspected that the project was cancelled due to declining Canadian-American relations and the greater concerns of the Vietnam War. While Bull's project did not place an object in orbit, it did fire its payload into space for only $10 million, the total devoted to the project. For comparison, affordable rockets can fall into a realm between 60 and 90 million US dollars. Vampire Vision. The Wehrmacht developed a highly advanced infrared device for night use that could be attached to the assault rifle Sturmgewehr 44. This device was named ZG-1229 and codenamed Vampire. The device was heavy, at 5 pounds or 2.25 kilograms of weight, and was attached to the rifles at a weapons production facility in Stuhl. The Vampire was the first portable night vision device for infantry soldiers. Previously, the feature had only been developed for cameras on British anti-aircraft large weapons and German Panther tanks. They were introduced to the battlefield in February of 1945. The Wehrmacht counted on 310 units toward the end of the war, and similar infrared gear was mounted on MG-34 and MG-42 machine guns, which some believe allowed the Germans to hold the Eastern Front for longer than they otherwise would have. A soldier carrying a Vampir was called a Nachtjäger, or Night Hunter. He would carry the 5-pound device along with a Trockergestell 39 backpack with a 30-pound cased battery and a gas mask container with another battery to keep the image converter powered. The device worked by means of a tungsten light behind a filter that only allowed infrared light to go through. A sensor would then operate using the upper infrared spectrum, which meant it would not respond to body heat. It would take years before that technology was finally developed. Arab Torpedo Hassan al-Rama may have invented not only the torpedo, but the rocket as well, intended to propel his torpedo. Willie Lay talks about al-Rama's invention in his book Rockets, Missiles, and Space Travel, stating, quote, Hassan al-Rama adds one unsuspected novelty, a rocket-propelled torpedo consisting of two flat pans fastened together and filled with powder or an incendiary mixture, equipped with a kind of tail to ensure movement in a straight line and propelled by two large rockets. The hole was called the self-moving and combusting egg, but no instances of its use are related. Furthermore, it's been considered by academics that Arabic writings beyond those of Al-Rama may have explored the concept of the rocket before the Chinese. Particularly notable are the writings of Yusuf ibn Ismail al-Khatub, who explored the use of altered saltpeter, a Chinese substance used to ignite weapons. It's believed that out of the 107 gunpowder recipes offered by Al-Rama in his Book of Military Horsemanship and Ingenious War Devices, 22 were intended for rockets. His chemical concoctions were also oftentimes more explosive than those developed by the Chinese around the same time. It's been claimed, however, that some of Al-Rama's word choices could indicate a Chinese inspiration or even origin, particularly based around saltpeter, which Arab military scholars often referred to as Chinese snow or salt, with rockets being called Chinese arrows. 
However, it's possible that some terms used might have been intended to suggest a connection to the Chinese invention of gunpowder, rather than to credit the Chinese with the inventions. Research has been conducted that claims the use of Al-Rama's technologies in the successful Muslim efforts during their fight against the Mongols and during the 13th century Crusades. The techniques and military weaponry may have then been distributed to Asia and Europe by means of these events. However, these findings have not always been welcomed by the academic community, although rocket technology can now be associated and at least partially attributed to the golden age of Islamic civilization thanks to the discovery of Al-Rama's work. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring Dark Five. Remember, new players using their link within the next 30 days will get 100,000 silver for lots of upgrades, 50 gems, one energy refill, and one free champion, Adjudicator. Download Raid Shadow Legends by clicking on the link in the description below.